I'm here with Spatchy, uh, and we're going to show you some uh, crucifix details so when you get to the position, you can actually finish from there. A mistake I see a lot when people get to the crucifix is they're really focused on this upper body control, right? Having a tight seat belt, but they tend to end up being like flat on their back or like their sh uh, top shoulder is further back. So if Spatch were to bridge, it would push me flat and then he's able to kind of misalign his shoulders to the rest of my body and start escaping. So just off the bat, I want to get my seatbelt, but I want my shoulder underneath his head, right? This is going to make it harder for him to bridge. And if he does push me back, instead of me going flat, he's just going to push me completely with him, right? So from here, I'm going to be able to start attacking my chokes without him being able to get too much uh, going in terms of escapes. Now, it's not just my shoulder positioning that's going to make me keep the position. This hand here can do a few things. I can play interference, right? I can keep this hand from coming in so I can work chokes. Or sometimes I like to keep my hand scooped behind the back of my head to keep his hand further away. It kind of does both, right? As well, it makes it harder for him to start, sorry for pulling your hair, for bridging, right? Um, and then the last thing that's less uh, easy to see is I want his wrist under my bottom side knee and this foot's going to be pulling towards the mat, right? Just to help staple this. On top of that, I'm going to scissor my legs apart slightly. So my top leg's going to push in and my bottom leg's pushing down, right? This is going to put pressure on his shoulder and it's going to make it harder for him to bridge. Like even without the rest of the upper body control, it's difficult for him to start escaping here because this shoulder is isolated and it's also elevated off the mat, so it's putting shoulder lock pressure for him to rotate this way. So again, just touching through uh, those points of control. I'm not flat on my back. I'm putting my top shoulder further forward. If your range of motion for your hands isn't great, I can go palm over palm to keep this shoulder positioning so that it can't push me flat, right? If not, if I feel comfortable just with my regular seatbelt, I can still stay here as long as I keep his head up on my shoulder. This hand can either play interference. I like to cup just under the punch knuckles here so I can keep his wrist turned away or I'm grabbing behind my head and keeping his arm extended away from his body so it's harder for him to hand fight and stop the chokes, right? And then lastly, there's two kinds of control I can have, bottom leg control and top leg. If I'm doing bottom leg control, I want to keep his shoulder under tension so it's difficult for him to start turning away from me. Especially if this hand's like free, if he tries to get his hands connected, right? I, I wanna limit that by putting this shearing pressure with my legs just to get his shoulder elevated. And if you're doing it right, it should almost feel like, for your partner, like a little baby shoulder lock. Okay. Um, a good segue from here, and one of my favorite submissions to do from the crucifix is gonna be the reverse Uma Plata. A lot of people teach this, especially you see it in Judo a lot, where they'll roll through on top of turtle. But in Jiu Jitsu, I feel like that's less practical, especially without the gi, right? Because if I roll, I'm creating a lot of space. So. A lot of the times I get to the reverse uh, Plata just by sitting up from this bottom leg control. So what I want to be doing is I want to be bracing my leg against him here just to have like this contact. So if he does try to scramble up, this kind of slows him down, right? I'm going to 
cross face, bring my chest in front of him, and I start walking myself up so I can bring my arm into his uh, elbow here. From this position, I want to bring my chest over top of the shoulder. So I sink this to the side here. And then I have a few options for finishing. I like to grab my own shin and I kind of use it like a lever, like I'm heel hooking his, his elbow and I'm just raising this wrist up. He's tapping, so I'm, I have to let go there. Alternatively, I can bring my hips up and then I kick this leg under my body, right? And you can see I have a pretty full range of motion when I come through here. I can kick this all the way through, so there's a huge potential to break. Um, so if you're doing this on like your friends, just be careful, right? So rewinding. So there's a few ways I can sit up with control, right? So that I beat him through this position. Um, either I can just go like airplane mode, right? And put my chest heavy over his face or one of my favorite ways is I like to get inside wrist control and I'm gonna put my hand underneath of his shoulder here and I'm gonna do like a little push up so that my elbows raising his shoulder off the ground. Similar to how me shearing my legs creates height for his shoulder and makes it harder for him to sit up. This hand that was underneath is gonna go to a scoop, right? So now his shoulder should be pretty like immobile, right? So move around here, right? Not really easy. I fold this back through. I take my arm out and then I'm in position to finish. Some maintenance things that might be important. Um, if his hand is starting to get further away, right, it's going to be hard to get the same uh, pressure in a shoulder lock. So it can be as simple as just grabbing his wrist and realigning it. Or I like to use my foot and I brace the side of his arm as I kick this leg straight and then I can rebite this just to get his wrist underneath of my knee. From here, I go to my shin whizzer. I can finish, I sit up, I can finish through this way. Uh, both are viable. I really like the shin wizard one because I don't have to do as much. I can get the finish without uh, risking losing the position. And then one last thing, when we're sitting up, if he happens to beat me to the punch and he starts sitting up first, I'm just gonna follow him through to the turtle, right? And then I can continue to reattack here. Like it doesn't matter where we go as long as I'm ready to, to follow him instead of like being uh, too reactive when I start taking away control of his upper body to sit up. If he starts sitting up and like I don't follow him, I'm going to end up on the bottom. He's going to wrap my legs up. He's going to end up in top side control or in my, in my half guard or, you know, in a position I don't really want him to be. So when I feel him coming up, if I get too much space, I'm just going to bring my legs behind me and follow him to the top. And then from here I can start like dragging him back, rolling through, whatever I have to do to get him belly up again. Um, or you can attack from top turtle, just depending on your preferences. If you guys have any questions, just comment below and we'll be there to answer them.